In 2001, researchers from Great Britain began working with 248 people to build better exercise habits over the course of two weeks. The subjects were divided into three groups. The first group was simply tasked with recording how often they exercised. The second group was the motivation group. Along with tracking how often they exercised, they were also tasked with reading some material on the benefits of exercise. The researchers then also explained to the group how exercise can lead to lower risks of heart disease and improve heart health. And finally, there was the third group. They also tracked how much they exercised and they also received the same presentations, which ensured they had the same levels of motivation as the second group. However, they were also given a third task. They were tasked with formulating a plan about when and where they will exercise in the following week. Specifically, each member of the third group completed the following sentence. During the next week, I will partake in 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on X day at X time in X place. So here are the results. Group 1's exercise rate was 35%. Group 2's exercise rate was 38%, which means that all the motivation really didn't do much. But Group 3 had a whopping 93% exercise rate, which means that 93% of people in Group 3 have completed their weekly exercise. That is more than double the previous rates. The magical sentence which they filled out is what I call the implementation intention, which is a plan you make beforehand to specify where and when you will act. That is how you intend to implement a particular habit. The punchline is clear. People who make a specific plan on when and where to act on a habit are way more likely to follow through. And too many people try to change their habits without figuring out any of the specific details. We leave it up to chance and hope that we will just remember to do it and get motivated at the right place and time. Many people think they lack motivation, but what they really lack is clarity. Without an implementation intention, it can be quite hard to find the right place and time. It isn't always obvious when and where to take action. This is why some people wait their entire lives for the right moment. But once this intention of implementation has been set, you no longer have to wait for the right moment. So instead of thinking about meditating in the morning or lunch, with an implementation intention plan, you would rather say, I will meditate for one minute at 7 a.m. in my kitchen. Or studying, I will study 20 minutes of Spanish at 6 p.m. in my bedroom. If you aren't sure when to start your habit, try the first day of a week, a month, or a year. People are more likely to take action at those times because hope is usually higher. If we have hope, we have a reason to take action. A fresh start feels motivating. Being specific about your goals literally helps you achieve them more than anything else. When your dreams are vague, it's easy to rationalize exceptions and never actually do the work that will lead you to success. The goal is to make the time and place so obvious that with enough repetitions, you get an urge to do the right thing at the right time, even if you can't say why. There are countless ways to use implementation intention in your life, but by far my favorite approach is called habit stacking. Have you ever heard of the story of Dennis Derrida? Probably not, it's, it's fine. I'll just tell you the short story. Derrida was the writer of Encyclopedia, one of the most comprehensive encyclopedias of all time. He was really broke, but when Catherine the Great, Russian Empress at the time, heard of Derrida's financial troubles, her heart went out to him. She was a great book lover of Encyclopedia, so she decided to buy Derrida's personal library for £1,000. That is equal to about £150. 50,000 pounds today. And suddenly, Derrida had money to spare. Not only did he pay for her daughter's wedding, but he also bought a new scarlet robe for himself. Derrida's scarlet robe was beautiful. So beautiful, in fact, that he immediately started noticing how out of place it was compared to all his normal belongings. And Derrida soon felt the urge to upgrade all of his belongings. He replaced his old rug with a royal quality one. He bought expensive sculptures around the house. He bought mirrors and a better kitchen table. He replaced his old straw chair with one made out of leather. Like falling dominoes, one purchase led to the next. Derrida's behavior is not uncommon. I mean, you can spot this pattern everywhere. I mean, you buy a nice dress and you gotta get those matching earrings and shoes, right? You buy a new toy or a new video game and now you have to get all of the expansion kits. This is called the Derrida effect, but we can actually use this to our advantage. I mean, many human behaviors follow this cycle. You often decide what to do next based on what you just finished doing. And when it comes to building new habits, 
you can use the connectedness of your behavior to your advantage. One of the best ways to build a new habit is to stack your new habit on top of one you already do every single day. This is a special form of implementation intention, because rather than pairing your habit with a specific time and place, you pair it with an already existing behavior. For example, meditation. After I pour my coffee in the morning, I will meditate for one minute. Gratitude. After I sit down to have dinner, I say one thing I'm grateful for today. The key is to tie your desired behavior into something you already do every single day. And once you have mastered this basic structure, you can start to create habit chains by stacking multiple habits together. After I pour my morning cup of coffee, I will meditate for 60 seconds. After I meditate for 60 seconds, I will write my to-do list for the day. And after I finish writing my to-do list for the day, I immediately start my first task. You can also insert behaviors in the middle of habit chains that you already have. What you should also keep in mind is that your activation or your cue should also have the same frequency as your desired habit. If you want to do a habit every day, but you stack it on top of a habit that only happens every Monday, that's not a good choice. And just to make sure you succeed with this in the long run, I want to tell you one final tip. Habit stacking works best when the cue is highly specific and immediately actionable. Many people select cues that are too vague, and I made this mistake myself. When I wanted to start a push-up habit, I said to myself, I will do 50 push-ups every single morning. But that wasn't really specific, and I didn't stick with it for the long run. But then I realized what I had to change. Instead of saying I will do 50 push-ups every morning, I said to myself I will do those 50 push-ups the moment I get out of bed next to my bed on the floor. And believe it or not, I'm doing my push-ups to this day. The first law of behavioral change is to make it obvious. This is the beginning of your habit, but this is just one out of four laws of behavioral change and of long-lasting habits. In future videos, I'm going to continue talking about habits and the laws of behavioral change. And remember, the two most common cues are time and location, and habit stacking is a strategy you can use to link a new habit to one that already exists. If you've enjoyed this video and come this far, then consider leaving a like, it really helps. With that said, thank you for watching and I'll catch you later.